Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Did you know that the Babylonians destroyed the temple in Jerusalem and then after seven years of captivity Judah returned and rebuilt the temple and then King Herod had expanded the temple and the Romans destroyed it in 70 AD. Now people are, you know, they argue and fight over, well, you know, there's not going to be a temple. Yeah, there is going to be a temple. But did you know that they tried to build a temple in 363 AD? Ah. Well, there was a, a Roman emperor. Now, Rome was going into decline. And his name was Julian, and they call him Julian the Apostate. Supposedly, he was brought up by Christian parents. But what does that mean nowadays? I mean, you've got all these TV preachers that claim to be followers of Christ, but uh, they seem to be, that's not what I would consider, but there's no telling what he believed. But he believed that the Roman Empire, supposedly, according to some historians, supposedly he believed that the Roman Empire was collapsing because of Christianity. So he wanted to go back to the old gods. And he encouraged and helped those claiming to be Jews to rebuild the temple. 363 AD, okay? So what, the, uh, what they did was is they took all the remaining stones from the old temple and started rebuilding it. So how did that work? Well, let's go take a look. Now in Matthew 24... Jesus said that there would not be one stone left upon another. Now, uh, if you look at the Wailing Wall, if you don't catch the connection, either the Wailing Wall, if it is part of the temple, that means Jesus is a false messiah and a false prophet. But if you believe Jesus, well, then the Wailing Wall is not part of the temple. Take your pick. Believe Jesus, believe the Jews. Uh, I pick Jesus, but that's, you know, that's just me. So, the Jews uh, started taking the, the, the remaining stones from the Temple Mount. And they started to get the workmen and rebuild the Temple. And there was a series of things that happened that uh, kept it from happening. Now, there was a guy named uh, St. Christostom. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. C-H-R-Y-S-O-S-T-O-M. And But he said that the destruction of Jerusalem is to be ascribed not to the power of the Romans, for God had often delivered it from no less dangers, but by his special providence. So, after the sacrifice of Christ, God the Father was happy to get these useless animal sacrifices and observances and put them out of business. Now, some of the Jews and the Roman emperor, they uh, 
put up some money and gold and jewelry to assist in financing the rebuilding of the temple. Now, when they were digging the new foundation, uh, you know, so they had a bunch of people working there. They were uh, hit by repeated earthquakes. There was one earthquake that was really, really bad. So, <laughs> and then there was a fire coming out of the earth near the foundation of the temple. Now, the people try to explain and say, well, you know, it was just methane gas built up in the earth that was, you know, uh, when you'd hit it with a metal shovel against a rock, a spark would happen and then it would catch fire. But uh, workers were getting burnt, scorched, and blasted. You know, so between the fires in the foundation coming out of the ground and the earthquakes uh, that were kept knocking the work down that they were doing, you know, they... Uh, <laughs> unbelievable but it was recorded by uh, a number of authors that were christians that said you know they had earthquakes the fires uh storms uh whirlwinds lightning uh flaming crosses in the heavens and uh people were you know they were getting burnt and you know bad so the uh basically they decided huh maybe this isn't such a good idea you know now according to some historians there was even a um, a large luminous cross in the sky when all this stuff was going on so you know, this little thing, I, I've always been a student of history. And I only recently discovered this little thing that happened. Uh, you know, it's amazing. They hide all this information from us. They don't want us to know that the Rome and the Jews try to rebuild the temple and, you know, here it is, they're working on the foundation and fire's coming up out of the ground. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Oh, well, that was just pockets of methane gas coming loose from the ground, right. And then lightning and, uh, you know, like tornadoes and earthquakes. You know, they would do a lot of work and then an earthquake would come and everything would fall over. You know, <laughs> but when the workers started getting burned... And uh, according to some, some of them died. You know, and it wasn't just a one-time event. <laughs> you know, of uh, the fires. I heard it was a series of them. You know, they'd start digging in the ground. Next thing you know, there'd be fires. People were getting burnt and killed and, and scarred. And, uh, you know, so finally the workers just said, you know what? Uh, I don't care how much you pay me. I quit. I'm no, I can, I can find something else to do. Um, I guess they didn't have asbestos suits back in them days. What do you think? So, um, so yeah, if you want to, you know, 363, the temple, Julian, the apostate, Roman emperor, uh, look it up and read about it. Of course, they'll deny it. But you know what? If they had the emperor of Rome and all the Jews wanting to rebuild the temple, why didn't they complete it? Well, fire and earthquakes is why they never completed it. You know? So, I guess the uh, Lord was sending them a message, just like he sent them a message in 70 AD. Jesus said, It is finished. It is finished. No more sacrifices are necessary. And then in 70 AD, that was it. 
So, all right. All glory, blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.